So we will try to make it uh, short, like around 35 minutes. So what I want to do is first uh, five minutes just give you a few information about what is a do, and uh, after we'll do a small demonstration about the product, and then I will show you a little bit of code to see how it works behind the scenes. So let's start with some information about Odoo. Odoo is actually a, a, a big project, but it's not very well known among the Python community. It started uh, 10 years ago, uh, in 2005, and uh, actually, the reason why we did it in Python so I, w I was at the university around 2000 in Belgium, and there is a guy, and I was coding in C, in PHP, we were doing a lot of websites, and one day there is a guy that came, and his name is Denis Frère, here. I, I just found uh, an email from that era, you see, people were talking about hosting some Perl uh, web application, and he, and he says, you should do it in, in Python. And he came to, my, to the university, to the dorms, and he showed us what was Python. And uh, we started to learn Python, and since, since that time, Python is my main programming language. So I've been programming in Python for uh, 15 years. And... Um, okay, let's go back to Odoo itself. So Odoo is a framework and also a set of applications built on that framework. The total code base of Odoo is around uh, 140k lines of code. 40k lines of code are, are, are the frameworks, and the rest is the 30 uh, main apps. So we are a company. The company is named Odoo. We edit a software. The software is also named Odoo. And that software is made uh, is actually 30 different business apps. And I will show you a demonstration on, of a few of them after. And then after, uh, you have a lot of people that are doing other apps and using the framework or extending the apps that we, we ship. And uh, so you have a very vivid uh, community around Odoo. We have around 400 contributors in the core with a truck factor of 11. So a truck factor is the number of people you have to, to kill if you want to kill the project. And uh, if you compare to Django, for example, it's, it's five person. If you kill five person, Django will probably stop. And Rails is seven. Um, Odoo is 11. The Linux kernel is around 150. So. And if you take account of the people that doesn't contribute to the core, but to other modules, um, then there is around 2,000 contributors. So it's a very big project. And there is around 500 companies that do their living because of Odoo. And some of them are in Spain. Um, we have 2,800 uh, stars on GitHub, and we have two millions of users. So by users, I mean somebody who every day sits at, at these computers and use Odoo. Maybe not all, the whole day, but at least some part of the day. So every day, we have uh, two million people that would log and use Odoo. Uh, why is it different? I think it's, it's superior to many frameworks, actually to almost every framework. Maybe there are some frameworks that I don't know, but because it's very modular. And all frameworks say they are modular, but Odoo is, is modular in a different way, and I will show you some examples after. It's business-oriented, so it has all the features you need to do business apps, like the security mechanism to, you know, people in, in the company might not uh, see some information that other people can see, so all that kind of thing is, is built in. And it's only since one year that it's, it's fully web-based. Before that, it was not fully web-based. It was, you know, at, at, at first started as a client and server application. You, so you had to run a, a client application on, on every PCs, and you were running a server. 
Um, since one year, it's, very, it, it's fully web-based, and uh, it uses a special templating engine that nobody else uses, but I will show you why I think it's, it's superior. And also, it has a small GS, uh, JavaScript framework built on, on standard libraries, and so it has a rich client. It's a full, uh, like a native application in JavaScript. And also, it's, it is very simple because you see, it's only 40k lines of code from, for the framework, and the API is around 30 functions. So if you know those 30 functions, you know to use all the, you know how to consume and program everything in Odoo. And um, the power of Odoo comes from what is already available, from its add-ons. And you have add-ons for everything. Uh, everything related to, to business. So when you do, to, you, when you do, you need to make invoices, payment, manage product, uh, deal with customers, uh, with physical product, accounting. Those kind of things they are built in in Odoo. So I think many people who develop new web application they spend most of their time reinventing the wheel because when you do a, a new and for example, a new startup, at some point you have to invoice customers, you have to do payment, you have to manage people, you have to... So those sets of features, they are built in, in Odoo and you don't waste your time uh, doing that again and again. Um, so why isn't it more popular? I think there are a few reasons. One of them is because it's business oriented and business is not fun. You know, people prefer uh, to doing games instead of business. It's, it's wrong. Actually, doing business apps is very fun. Um, also, the, it was not web-based before. So now you can build web application using Odoo. Before, it was not possible. It, it was just a tool to manage companies. So it's very recent. And also, we had no documentation or bad documentation. It's only since December that we have a, a good documentation. And also, uh, Odoo is not a good Python citizen. For example, the, it, it's not packaged on, on, uh, on pip, for example. So you cannot do pip install Odoo, because Odoo is a, quite a big uh, project. And it's actually also uh, lots of JavaScript, lots of other things. It uses PostgreSQL as a database storage. So it's not just a, a Python library. And also, there were a lot of ugly code, you know, ugly quirks in Odoo. And we fixed most of them in the V8 API so that we released in September last year. So no, it's much more cleaner, much more Pythoning than it was before. Because we started at the time when ORM didn't exist, you know. Uh, SQL, obje SQL object was the first in Python that I used, but it was much later after we started um, Odoo. Um, yeah, also Odoo was named OpenERP before, and before that it was also named TinyERP, so we changed the name two times. So I will show you what it looks like. Uh, let's go. Okay. So I will show you the new UI. Uh, the new UI is still alpha, so sometimes I might switch to the, old, to the stable tree because some things might not work in the development version. That's the, development, the master tree here. So basically, at least at the beginning, Odoo was just a tool to manage company. And I will show you just a simple flow of what happens every day in, every, in not, not every, but many companies. So, we will look at the CRM. The CRM is a tool to organize your sales. So how it works is, is like this. And, and it's the same in many, many companies. So you first have a contact with the customers. And this is this, this customer that wants to buy some keyboards. So that's the first contact you have with the person. And what will happen is that you will call the customers, discuss with him, qualify his needs, then probably you will do a, a concrete proposition uh, about selling him something, and then there is sometimes a negotiation phase, and then after we get a deal or we lost the deal. So opportunities are just one of the sample objects that Odoo manage. And you saw here, that's the view with the flows of opportunities, and I can show you what an opportunity looks like. It's just a few 
um, information with, with some fields, like, okay, who's the customers? This is Agrolé. And what's, what's the revenue we expect from that deal? What's the probability? Okay. And there, so it's just, it's just CRUD. So it's just, you know, information that you save. And you can see the flow there. And you see at the bottom of the document, we have what we call the chatter. It's just like a Facebook uh, thread. Uh, and it's available on every business document in Odoo. So when, uh, when I'm, I look at the opportunity, I can discuss with my customers uh, using this here. I need to add you know, this e email address. Okay, it's already done. So I send in a message, what are you interested in, blah, 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 blah. It will send him an email. If the person reply by email, it will come back on the thread below. So I, I'm... I can manage all my communication from, from the opportunity itself. So at what point the, the customer will say, okay, I want to buy this or this. So what I do, I, I will create a quotation. A quotation is just a set of things that I propose to sell to a customer, uh, like maybe some keyboard here. And um, after, I can uh, send the quotation by email. Voilà. Oops. Oops. Okay. Uh, voilà. I send the, the, the quotation by email. The person can reply on the quotation. It will appear below. And then after, fine. there are two ways you can uh, close the deal. One of them would be, okay, the customers by phone say, uh, yes, I want to buy this, send me the goods. Or you can also use uh, an online version where I click here, I can see the, the quotation here. Um, and the person can accept the quotation online, sign, it's difficult with the mouse, my name, okay, and here, I accepted the quotation. I go back into sales. And after the, the quotation is done, what we do, what we will do is to create an invoice. Up, I create an invoice. And also, um, it will create a delivery order. So the delivery order, it's just a document that goes to the warehouse and the people will deliver the goods to the customers. And the invoice is the other part. It's the customers that has to pay the money. And after uh, the person's pay, I won't go into all the details because I want to make it quick, but you, 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 get, you get the idea. Uh, after, the customers will pay, and we can reconcile. That's the old UI. I just wanted to show you here. It's the way you reconcile invoices with the payments. So you get some money on the bank account, you have some invoices, and then you reconcile them. And then the deal is completely finished because we've delivered the good and we've, uh, we, we've got the money from the customer. A very simple uh, flow. And uh, what's available also in Odoo, we have... Uh, Oh. Okay, I've lost the Wi-Fi. I wanted to show you, I had another version online with more data and more things installed, but I think I don't have internet anymore, so I want to show, okay, I can show it here. So you have also a tools to do reports. For example, you can know, you want, you want to know uh, the sales made uh, by every country, uh, by every, Sales team, okay, it's it's always the same here, and you can also get nice. Hmm. I need to do. Wait, I will just install something. Okay, so that's what what you see here are all the application of Odoo. 
the basic ones, so the ones that we as uh, the company Odoo edit, and there are plenty more uh, outside that are made by other companies. And uh, I'm, I'm installing the CRM so that you know, we get more data here. Let's go back to, okay. So what, what we saw was uh, uh, just a simple sales flow. But there are other ways to sell your, sell your stuff. One, one other way would be to have a shop. And Odoo also has a point of sale. I hope it's open, yeah, okay, here. And the point of sale is just, okay. Um, is touch base, so you can click here, click, 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 up, and pay. So that's what the person will use in his shop at the, um, I don't know, uh, in, in French we say a, a la caisse, a la casa, maybe in, in, in Spanish. So here I pay some amount, I can validate. Okay, I need to pay at least the amount, okay, here, okay. And then I go to the next order, you see? So that's another sales channel. And I told you recently we added the web layer on top of Odoo. Odoo was already using HTTP uh, because the, the client server protocol was XML RPC. Uh, so we had a small web layer, but we decided that because we had almost everything what, that a company needs to manage itself. We were just lacking one step, was the web uh, website part of the, of the company. So we say, okay, let's do a CMS. And I know Plone was supposed, Plone or Zoop was supposed to be the killer app uh, at the time I've, I've started with Python, but didn't happen. Um, so, I will show you what the web layer of Odoo looks like. Let's go now uh, on the website. So we say, okay. Yeah. Okay. Because we, we have information about many things that happens in the company and the company needs to have a needs to be public needs to have a presence on the web so uh, we wanted to make a simple tool to allow people to create their own website and there are many cms available uh, maybe thousands fin, hundreds at least of them so we wanted to make something different something really easy to use and we made this website builder. Those, the website builders work with blocks. So what you do is you drag and drop different kinds of blocks like this. Voila. Okay, and you save. And then you edit these blocks. And uh, that's the basic blocks that you see, but I, wi I will show you some team after. And then you can edit the content here and change it. And because you use blocks, you're not creating all the layout yourself. So you can have beautiful looking websites because some designers took the, created some uh, very fancy blocks for you. So for example, if you want to compare price, you can use this block to compare price and, and say, okay, we have three offers uh, with that price, that price, etc. okay. And that's just static pages. After, because we use the same system, for, exam for example, here I have a contact form, and when I fill my contact form here, it's linked with the backend I, I showed you before. So when I will fill the contact form, if I go onto sales, I can see that I have a new opportunity Actually, it's a lead here, it's here. So each time I fill a form, I arrive in my CRM and then the flow of sales begins, okay? Pretty straightforward. And after we said, okay, we have all the information about the product, so let's do an e-commerce. And uh, 
we just published the product online here, and we added the Add to Cart button. And when you do Add to Cart, you actually do a sales order, like I did before. I did the sales order myself. No, it's the customer itself that creates the, sa the sales order. But the object, the object behind is the same. So for the whole e-commerce that you can see here, well, I need to fill all the information, blah, blah, blah. OK, shipping to the same address. And then I can pay. Here, I only install wire transfer, but we have integration with uh, many payment providers. Well. OK. And the whole e-commerce flow that you saw here takes only 1,000 lines of code, because we had all the built-ins in Odoo already. And I, d I only showed you the, you know, the, the easy stuff, because you can add more and more feature and get you know, very complex flow in the companies by adding some options. So the forms I showed you when I do a sales order, it's just one or two, uh, one of two fields. Let's go back to a sales order. You see, it's very simple, name of the customer's address, uh, things to sell, but you have many cases where, where you need more. It's okay, you go in configuration, in settings, and then you enable new stuff. Like, for example, I want to display margin on the sales order. So I want to know how much I, I get um, uh, when I sell something 100 euro, how much do I gain on it. And I go back to my uh, sales order, okay? And here, you see there is a new field. And you can add many, many things. And at the end, you get, uh, you get 20 fields. And it's very complex. But the way it's designed, it's so that people can start easy. But if they have complex things, they can manage it. OK. So let's go back to my uh, web website. And what's displayed on the website, what you can see here, if I edit, I can edit everything. So here, if I edit this, it will change the name of the product. Okay? If I change the price, it will change the price. So everything that appears on the screen, you can edit it. And uh, we do that because we have a special template engine. And we know when we display something on the screen where it comes from in the database. And so you can edit everything. And the same system to edit static page can be used to edit product. So I can use also my building blocks here. Voila. Voila. And here I save the description of the product. OK, so what I showed you is just uh, two applications the CRM and invoicing. And that's the, we, we also host it online for people. So we have a cloud offer. That's the pricing of the cloud offer. But you can see there are lots of more applications like managing uh, uh, manufacturing, accounting, project management, inventory, point of sale, events. So if you want to manage an event like this, uh, you can use also uh, Odoo. Also, yeah, I wanted to, to say, uh, the people, the guy who introduced me to Python, that guy, Denis Frère, was the guy who started uh, Europe Python. So he started the first year in Charleroi. Uh, I remember we were organizing the event with him. So uh, if you are all here today, it's because also of him. Um, let's go back to my, yeah. So I finished my demonstration. I, it's, it's not. I don't want to be complete. I just want to tease your curiosity so that after you might go and say, mm, uh, that Python project looks uh, interesting. So let's dive into the code and, and look what it looks like and why I think it's superior to many frameworks. OK. Um, hello. I think it's, it's, it's big enough so that people can read. So in Odoo, you define, you define object, 
like I think in many, many frameworks, like Django or Rails, by defining, defining the fields. So for example, uh, we will check an invoice. Is an invoice, that, that's a true now. Let's take an invoice here, okay. Yeah, it's an invoice. So there are many types of fields. Odoo stores its data into PostgreSQL, okay? So you have char fields, selection fields, you know, uh, integer, boolean, dates, and relational fields. So you have many to one when it's a relation to another object and uh, uh, many to many when, when you have, you know, multiple relation between two objects. Uh, pretty common. And what you have a special in, in Odoo is the compute attribute. So when, when you say, for example, amount tax, or maybe amount total, it's easier. Amount total is the amount of the invoice, and it depends on the order f uh, ordered data. So it's a compute field. So you say, okay, this field, it's, a, it's not a real field, uh, that is simply stored. It's a field that you compute when uh, other value changes. So I will, uh, let's check, on. okay. So this function is called each time a dependency fields of, of the amount each change. So each time, for example, you add a line on the invoice, you have to compute the uh, total again. So it's, it's just a function here that you define and it will compute the value. And then you have two different ways to use compute fields. One of them is to say, okay, each time I need the field, just compute it. Or you can store it. So you say store true. So it means that we compute it when it changed, but then we store it in the database. And by storing in the database, it makes it much more easier to after search for the value of the fields. Because if you want to search for a value, uh, if it's not stored, you have to compute all the values to, to know which one is the correct. So, uh, but it's, so you use it like a regular field, but it's computed. And many of the business logic in Odoo goes into those compute fields. After, you have a few functions, uh, business functions that are linked to the different buttons on the object. So for example, when I click confirm an invoice, what should it do? So that's all the code that we see here, okay? And after, you have the view, so how to display uh, the invoice on the screen. And I show you the backend view. Oh. It's, it's in XML, so let's... Uh, Oh, let's check account invoice. Voilà. So that's the view description. So it's just the list of fields to display, blah, 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 with some layouting, like I want to see um, a different tabs or group the, the, the fields together. And, and that's it. After, you have also web pages, but we don't have web pages for invoice, but for the sales order or the product page, I will show you, I will show you what uh, the, the page looks like. Website sale. No, I won't show you that. I will show you the extension mechanism. But it's also, it's just an XML-based template like uh, Genshi uh, or uh, KID or Zoop template. Actually, it was uh, inspired by the template. And what I want to show you is how to add new stuff on, on, uh, on Odoo. And that's the, the, the strength of Odoo. That you can say, okay, uh, I show you that I installed product margin. It's, it's just a module that adds a field and show you the margin. How does it do that? You can inherit object and override method, but everybody knows how to it's, it's common in, in, in Python, so it's very easy. But what you can do is you can add new columns on, the, on those objects. So you can add new fields. And once you've added those fields, here, I added the compute fields. That's the old syntax. 
and I added the two functions to compute the fields. After, I want to display the field somewhere. So I go on the view and I say, OK, I want to extend the view. And after this, this part of the view, I want to display this. And everything is con constructed this way. That's why I showed you at the beginning that you know my, my form view was uh, very simple. Where is it? Here. I show you my form view is very simple, but as the more and more module I install, the more complex it gets. And it's really small uh, Lego bricks that you, you can build on up to, and you get a very, a very complex system, and everything works together. Um, um, I think I will um, ask uh, if you have any question. I will uh, take question, and I hope that I teased your curiosity and that you will uh, uh, look at Odoo. If you have any question after the talk, uh, feel free to come to see me. Uh, I'll be there this this afternoon, and also I'll be there at the social event. So don't hesitate to come and ask me a question. Thank you, and let's go. Let's proceed with the question. If somebody has question. Hello. Yeah. Uh, I would like to know how are you how you compute the read access and write access for oh. documents. So we have two mechanisms of uh, security in Odoo. One is the access control list. So you can say uh, uh, this person from this group doesn't have the right to read, write, uh, create things. It's it's almost like ACL in Unix. And you have a second mechanism. It's record rules. It's more precise. It can give you visibility. So you say. Uh, every time somebody do this operation, apply this set of criteria. I didn't show you, but uh, we have a filter mechanism here uh, where you know you can say, uh, I want to see the sales order uh, that are to these customers. Okay? So we have a, a syntax to express filters, and it's called domains. And you can apply domains based on, on, the, on the person who use it. So for example, you can say, the, every salesman can only see his invoices, or you know that kind of things, and it's it was made, uh, it was built in into Odoo since the very beginning, and it didn't change. Yeah. Um, in how do you deal with with uh, large data sets? How oh. do you uh, because it's I'm familiar with with, Actually, with, with the approach. The, the biggest biggest uh, deployment of the of Odoo is. Uh, um, 50, 50, wait, 50 gig, uh, terabytes, I think, of, of data. And I, we don't do nothing. It's just Postgres uh, is very cool. And Postgres can deal with a lot of data. So we rely, we rely on Postgres. And also, um, when you have blobs, attachments, image, they are stored outside the database. So, so only the business uh, data are stored in, uh, in yeah, Postgres. I, I, I didn't. Uh, yeah. Pre pre for my question precisely okay. enough, how do you deal with situations where a subset of users yeah. in in these l really large data sets, yeah. when a sub when a particular user only has access to a very small amount of documents? Uh, for 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 instance, you yeah. you have a hundred thousand documents, mm -hmm. and a user can only see fifteen. And what's the problem? Well, it, there's no. Your implementation bypasses that. Yes, no, you can use this, this syntax. But what's the criteria? Uh, you have thousands of documents. Why doesn't he, why does he see only fifteen? It's it's for for whatever reasons. Uh, so, uh, okay, no, okay. You, you have you, to you, define you, the once you define the reason, you get the, the the system work. You just define why, and it it, it just applies. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can show you an example if you want after. Hi. I have two quick questions. Yeah? Uh, one is if you start with a managed solution, is there a possibility to go uh, to a hosted solution? Uh, 
uh, yes. so that you retain all the data? Actually, yes so, and no. So if you start with the, what you have for the 10 euros, or, I don't know, a month, and yeah. then want to host it yourself, if you can do it and retain yeah. all the data? So in the cloud solution, we only ship you know, the basic apps, the one that, you know, the 30 uh, basic one. When you, if you want to use, oh, sorry, I, I don't have access. Uh, if you want to use uh, external modules, you need to be self-hosted. So you need to be on-premise. So the, the cloud solution is just for people, for small companies, because, or for simple companies. When you have complex needs, probably you need to go self-hosted. Okay? Okay, and the, the other question is, uh, when you have saved fields? When you have what? Saved fields, the fields where they Yeah, yeah. you can add ex uh, custom fields, and actually I didn't show you, uh, but you can do it from the UI. You can add fields and customize everything from the UI. When you can do it in Python modules or you can do it in the database itself. When do they know when to update? Uh, when you are uh, in, on the cloud, we migrate database from version to version. So we keep the customization and sometimes it's manual work because we have to make sure everything works. And uh, that's part of our offer. If you are on your own, you have to be careful uh, with your customization when you migrate from version to version. Is it clear? OK. <laughs> Just come to see me after. <laughs> okay. Any other question? Yes. Hey, uh, do you know about any company using Odoo in Brazil? Uh, yeah. We, uh, fin, I don't know the names, but there is a uh, partner named Accretion. That's a company that integrates Odoo there, and they they have plenty of reference. I don't have internet access, but I could show you. Uh, uh, no problem. Just curious because in Brazil we have some uh, business logic with this particular to the country. Yeah, so oh yeah, the, I I know they told me that you know it's a. Uh, it's a hell about accounting and the paperwork you have to do. So uh, they have a lot of module to deal with that. And okay. I, I know that it's very complex. So this is already done. So if I install Odoo and I can just use it in yeah. Brazil? Yeah, oh, you can okay, use it. Cool. Thank you. And uh, I forgot to mention also in Portugal, there is the, it's not in Spain, but in Portugal, the, the biggest installation of Odoo is five 500,000 people. It's all the teachers in Portugal that have to use Odoo because they use Odoo to schedule uh, the, you know, to assign teachers to the school and, and that, kind of, uh, that kind of work. So the Ministry of Education uses Odoo for everything now. They replaced, I think, 1,000 different applications, uh, no, 100 different applications with, with uh, Odoo. Yeah. Cool, thank you. Okay. We still have time for very short questions. Okay. Then Which is one is the shortest? <laughs> I have a short question. Yeah, okay. The, the, the answer may be long. So <laughs> when, you, when you go into price, one of the uh, common challenges is uh, in integration. Uh, you have uh, legacy apps, some of those will go away. Some of those need to stay forever. Yeah. So you need at some point to, to consider how to bring in data, yeah, okay, either okay. live or migrating into and out of Udo. So you Would can you do think it both ways. This way. is a good framework e for that? Yeah, you can okay. do it both ways. Either uh, you access the Odoo API using JSON RPC or XML RPC from the other apps, or you do it from within Odoo using any Python library you access. The, da the database or the API of other systems. So there's a, there's a lot of of work and connectors for other systems. Yeah. Well, thank you again, Anthony. And thank uh, you. The lunch is happening now, so just try to get some food. <laughs>